Shalom. Call Halayim Le Yahawa Bahasham Yahweh Shai Bahasham Rachakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, better known as GMS, who rule well. Peace and salutations unto the hopeful elect, the tabernacle of David, beginning with the 144,000 and the rest of the men, women, and children out of the 12 tribes of Israel, whom Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh will have mercy upon. I'm your brother Matizabath. And this is going to be a land back off the beloved elder. All right. Subscribe to his page, Biblical Defenders, so that you may be edified. And, um, you know, this has been the talk of Great Millstone in terms of these brothers uh, originally being a part of the GMS Boston camp. And um, I just want to do a response dealing with doctrine. Um, I have nothing against whatever happened to these individuals, and I'm not here to cast shame upon uh, these individuals, nor do I know the situation as to what has caused them to be put out the camp. But as the scripture says, you know, we are to defend the gospel, and that is the reason for my uh, video. So without further ado, let's take a listen forces of the Gentiles shall bring in what? Shall bring in gifts. But within the lands, we're going to have what? A select, a selection of a remnant of the strangers, all right, the people that were the other nations, all right, that's going to cling on to Yahweh Shai around this time, that's going to be living with us in the Holy Land. When you go to Ezekiel chapter 47, uh, verse uh, uh, 20, you guys got to explain this. All the nation of Israel is being brought back to the land of Israel. There are no Israelite foreigners, but it make mentions of the strangers that shall be with us. Go ahead, bro. Yeah, Ezekiel 47, verse 21. So shall you divide this land unto you according to the tribe of Israel. So now when you read Ezekiel 47 and 1, yeah. it's giving you the, uh, the, the inheritance. Uh, Manasseh is going to get this land. From west to this land, uh, a Jew is going to get this land, right? Yeah. So now that's the wrapping up of the giving of the lands, right? A future, a future prophecy. A future prophecy of what? The kingdom, the kingdom of, of heaven, heaven. That's right. of the fulfillment of the Most High, bringing His people back to the Holy Land, right? Fulfilling His prophecy and the strangers, so they could be they could serve their captivity underneath the children of Israel. Go ahead, bro. Verse, verse twenty-two. Go ahead. It shall, it shall come to pass that ye shall divide it by lot for an inheritance unto Not you, unto you, and to the strangers that sojourn amongst you, and to the strangers that sojourn amongst you. How can you be a stranger in your own land? Um. Yeah, let's let me start off with this precept right here. Let's get uh Second Peter chapter two and uh straight to the point. Um let's see where do I want to start? I want to start here. Verse 22 it says, But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the soul that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. And, you know, um, this is why you should fear Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right. And, you know, these individuals, um, they, you know, were amongst the brotherhood. All right. I think going on somewhere around nine or 10 years, it was projected unto me by the uh, Akim. But let this be an illustration that Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai can come quickly and remove thy candlestick. All right. And that's exactly what happened to this individual right here. He got his candlestick removed. He's lost the oil. Because essentially you cannot sit there and say at one's instances that the strangers, which he's alluding to being the heathen nations, which that wasn't speaking about the heathen nations. That was speaking about Israelites that were not born in the Holy Land, which we're going to show and prove to you in a second. But to sit there and to say in one sentence that the strangers dealing with the heathen nations are going to come and serve under captivity and one hand under the, um, you know, being subject unto the Israelites, beginning with the elect. But then in the same token, you're saying pertaining to Ezekiel, the 47th chapter, but they're going to get an inheritance with the land, which is another way of saying that they, too, are going to uh, reap salvation. That, that makes absolutely no sense. All right. 
the Lord is not the author of confusion, man. That's just straight up confusion. That's a bugged out ass doctrine. Right. So let's deal with that quickly. And this doesn't have to be too long. But, you know, this is just to edify the sheep. All right. So when you go to Ezekiel, the 47 chapter, which it goes into the um, inheritance. All right. Of all the tribes. All right. But the issue is here of uh, which these brothers don't understand. Ezekiel chapter 47, verse 22 in the King James Version. And it shall come to pass that ye shall divide it by lot for an inheritance unto you. And to the strangers that sojourn among you, which shall begat children among you, and they shall be unto you as born in the country among the children of Israel, and they shall have inheritance with you among the tribes of Israel. And it shall come to pass that in what tribe the stranger sojourneth, there shall he give him his inheritance, saith the Lord Yahweh. So first off, in order for us to understand who the strangers were, you have to understand originally how the nations, which there are a total of 18 nations in the Bible, how they originally were set up in the Old Testament. So let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 32. Let's get the milk scripture to understand how the Lord originally set everything up. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse eight. When the most high, Yahweh is the name, divided to the nations their inheritance you see now what nations is it speaking of in this context okay when you go into the hebrew word is gawayim which represents the other heathen nations or goyim in the yiddish they were already given their own inheritance it goes on to say when he separated the sons of adam he set the bounds of the people according to to the number of the children of Israel. Let's read it in the NLT in case you don't understand the KJV version. It says, when the Most High assigned lands to the nations, assigned lands to the nations, okay? When he divided up the human race, he established the boundaries of the peoples according to the number in his heavenly court because our nation, the nation of Israel, was the very last nation to be set up on the planet earth. When you read the book of Genesis, we were the last ones to be set up. That's why it was told to Abraham because, you know, he said in the video that how can you be a stranger in your own land? Well, dummy, let's <laughs> watch this. Let's get, uh, let's type in Abraham stranger. Cause Abraham was a stranger. Genesis 28 and four and give thee the blessing of Abraham to thee. And to thy seed with thee, that thou mayest inherit the land wherein thou art a stranger, which the Most High gave unto Abraham. Now, wait a minute. I know, I know, because people are going to come up on the comment board and say, but Matazatba, Abraham wasn't an Israelite. Okay. Yes, we understand that Abraham wasn't an Israelite during his time, but he indeed was a Hebrew. Okay. He indeed was a Hebrew. But notice it says here that thou art a stranger. OK, well, guess what? When the children of Israel were also coming into the land, they were strangers. And let's prove that when you. OK, the 25th chapter. Watch this. Leviticus 25. This is in the law now. I guess they forgot about this precept. Leviticus 25 and 23. The land shall not be sold forever for the land is mine. And this land is speaking of. Jerusalem for ye talking to the Israelites are strangers and sojourners with me. Hmm. What, what does that actually mean? It says verse 24 and in all the land of your possession, ye shall grant a redemption for the land. You see that? So we will call strangers and sojourners because it originally started with Adam, Adam was placed in the Garden of Eden, okay, which represents the East. Where is Jerusalem located? People will tell you it's over there in the middle, so-called Middle East. That was originally our land because if you can't receive it, Yahweh Shai was Adam, okay? That's why in 2nd Edris, the sixth chapter, it tells you that he was Lord 
over all creatures. And so when the kingdom of heaven is finally uh, established, when Yahweh Shah makes his second return, we're going to go back into that land and that's going to be where we're going to rule out of. That's going to be the main headquarters on the planet Earth. That's why the Lord put his name in that land. That is the best land in all the earth. You see, so drop down to verse 35. This is in the law. All right. KJV, it says, and if thy brother, OK, thy fellow Israelite brethren be waxen poor and fallen and decay with thee, then thou shalt relieve him. Yea, though he be a stranger or a sojourner that he may live with thee because you had Israelites that were born outside of the land. And as a matter of fact, when you get the book of Acts, the second chapter, this is this is what Acts was all about. Acts two and five. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. OK, what does it mean when you drop down to verse eight? It says, and how hear we every man in our own tongue, meaning language, wherein we were born. And then it drops down verses nine to eleven gives you the different um, countries that these Jews came from. Because all of them didn't live in the Holy Land in Jerusalem. So essentially speaking, whether they were from Parthians, whether they were from Medes, whether they were from Mesopotamia, okay, whether they were born in Egypt, Libya, Rome, right? Let's go through it. Acts 2 and 9, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and dwellers in Mesopotamia, and in Judea, and in Cappadocia, and in Pontus, Asia, all right, Phrygia. All right, uh, Pamphylia in Egypt and in parts of Libya about Cyrene. And guess what? In strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes. Proselytes is another way of saying um, coming into the faith, which were actual Israelites. All right, because when you understand the volume of the book, all right, it's dealing with one nation whom the Most High Yahweh cast it away for a certain time, but he had not cast it away completely because he left a grape. He left a, a, a small remnant because two thirds of our people, they're not going to make it on this side. But notice in verse 10, it says strangers of Rome is speaking of Jews. They will call strangers. Also, you can grab first Peter, the first chapter. It says, Pete, now remember Peter was the head apostle of the circumcision dealing with Jews. Listen to what Peter says. First Peter one and one Peter and an apostle of Yahweh Hamashiach to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia and Bithynia. Now, if you understand the scriptures, the last time I checked, none of the heathen nations were scattered the way Israel was scattered. So who could Peter have been talking about? OK, look, look, look at the NLT. NLT is dead spot on. This letter is from Peter and an apostle of Yahweh Shah Mashiach. I am writing to the most high's chosen people who are living as foreigners in the provinces of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia and Bithynia. Did not the scripture says in Deuteronomy, the seventh chapter, that the Lord chose Israel to be a special people, a chosen people? <laughs> right? Like, what are we talking about here? So this is evident proof that you had Israelites that were considered foreigners or strangers or Gentiles. This is not hard to put. So simply put, going back to Ezekiel, all right, when you go into it. Let's read it. Ezekiel 47, 22. And it shall come to pass that ye shall divide it by lot for an inheritance unto you and to the strangers that sojourn among you, which shall begat children among you. And they shall be unto you as born in the country among the children of Israel. They shall have inheritance with you among the tribes of Israel. Now, understand the Lord changes not because if we read in um, Deuteronomy, the 32nd chapter that. The other nations were already given inheritance. 
So who could this be talking about? Why would the uh, Heavenly Father divide the nations away from Israel only to turn around and say, but you know what? I'm going to give y'all an inheritance with Israel, even though they got their own inheritance. For instance, when you go to the Apocrypha, right, and see this, they, they lost the milk. The Lord took the uh, oil away from them. This is Sirach 17 and 17. It says, for in the division of the nations of the whole earth, he set a ruler over every people. So prior to giving the other 17 nations that the Bible speaks about, which represents the other heathen nations, prior to giving them their own lot of land and their own inheritance, he not only did that for them, but he raised up rulers to rule over their own people. But go on, going on here in this verse, it says, but Israel is the Lord's portion. That's why we was the only ones to get the law, statutes, commandments, which set us apart from the other nations. Because the law, when you go back up, OK, verse 11, it says, besides this, he gave them knowledge and the law of life for an heritage that was not given to the other nations. So how the fuck can you use Ezekiel, the 47 chapter as a means to say you, you have to explain this to us. Explain that. Well, I'm going I'm to explain it. When you go into the word strangers, okay, the Hebrew word there is gar, which represents a sojourner, a temporary inhabitant, right? A newcomer lacking inherited rights of foreigners in Israel, though conceded rights. Going back to what we read in first Peter, the most highest chosen people who were living uh, as foreigners because they were not born in the Holy Land. So anytime you had a situation of an Israelite brethren, let's say you had an Israelite brother born in Egypt and he, you know, according to the law, if you was born outside of the Holy Land, you have to come up uh, three times of the year. All right. To keep, you know, um, the ordinances that the Lord put out, such as the Passover, Pentecost. All right. Et cetera. So if you had a brother that was born in Egypt and let's say he decided to come back to Jerusalem, all right, and he wanted to stay there, you couldn't treat him like shit. You couldn't treat him as you would treat an actual heathen. That was the difference. You had to treat him like a brother that was uh, one born in the actual Holy Land. Just because he was born in Egypt don't make him no different. He's still an Israelite. That's really that's what it was really talking about, man. So you will have to explain. All right. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse eight, because it clearly tells you here that the heavenly father already assigned lands to the nations. That's how we know that Ezekiel 47 was not talking about literal heathens being the strangers. It was talking about Israelites that have become strangers. Even Abraham was a stranger coming in uh, to the land. Why did it call him uh, a stranger? Because Abraham was a part of the chosen lineage, which started with Shem. Remember, it tells you in Genesis, the ninth chapter, that the Lord is the God of Shem, not of uh, his other brothers, Ham and um, Japheth. Genesis 9 and 26. And he said, blessed be Yahweh, the power of Shem and Canaan shall be his servant. Because the heathen nations were set up to serve us. It didn't say, blessed be the Lord uh, God of uh, everyone. Why did it say Shem? Because when you follow the cho uh, chosen lineage, going all the way back to Seth, Noah, who was of the lineage of Seth, okay, what came out of that chosen uh, seed line. And then it was passed down from Shem, Arphaxad, Methuselah, all the way up until you get to Abram whose name was later changed to Abraham. And then the promise started with Abraham, passed down to Isaac and from Isaac to Jacob. In that order, man. Didn't mention anything about the other nations. Why? Because the other nations were already assigned their inheritance. They're not going to take part in the inheritance of Israel. 
So even when you go and let's wrap it up here, Isaiah 14, and uh, I'm going to start at verse one. The point is at verse two. For the Lord, Yahweh will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers, once again, all right, the Israelite foreigners shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people, which represents Israel, shall take them and bring them to their place. It's speaking of the Israelites are going to take the other heathen nations, bring them to their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of Yahweh for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. So how can you say in the same token that... They're going to serve us, but then also said, but they're going to get an, a, a lot of an inheritance. That's not written in the scriptures. You going off. You are simply going off, man. You know how much confusion that is when it's time to divide the land? You, you can't be a stranger in your own land. But we were. I proved it in the law, Leviticus, the 25th chapter. We are strangers and sojourners with the heavenly father. Because it started with Abraham. Abraham was given the promise. He was a stranger in the land because we got kicked out of that land, starting with Adam, the Garden of Eden. This is why the scripture says, let's go to um, Hebrews 5 and tw uh, 12. For when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of the most high and are become such as have need of milk and of and not of strong meat. For everyone that is use uh, that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. So you need to be taught again, man. That's if you can be taught again, because the way you coming out in this video it's clear as day that the Lord has taken the Holy Spirit off from you, man. It's a damn shame. Right? So let's end it off this. Let's get uh, Romans real quick, 16, verse 17, which says, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. So, hey, you know, these brothers have been marked, man. That's contrary to the doctrine. That's not 100% sound doctrine, right? And let's end it on this. Hebrews chapter, uh, what is it? 10 and verse 31. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power, man, because a man's goings is of the Lord. How then can a man understand his own way? And these brothers are definitely under the hand of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh all right. So with that, I want to say all praise, glory and honor be to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, with Dash, and double honors to the apostles and elders, a great millstone, better known as GMS, who taught us this 144 percent truth, peace and salutations unto the hopeful elect. Lord's will, this was edifying unto the next time. Shalom.